Within the Liquitex mediums range, let's take a closer look at gesso. Now we've got five varieties. Uh, here is our traditional white gesso, and we can see that on the palette right here. It's got excellent coverage. And, and think of gesso as this material that you use to seal and prime your surface. Now with acrylics, you can work on an unprimed surface. There's no problem doing that, but it's gonna stain the surface and the color is gonna sink in. So it's gonna have a, a, a I think more of an a, a ethereal look to it. So again, because it's staining it. If you put gesso on there, your paint is gonna sit on top of the surface more and it's gonna look more saturated. So that's our, our white. And this can be mixed with any color from your Liquitex range. So if you wanna tint that, you can, you can do so. If you don't wanna do that, we've got that in a gray variety as well. This has excellent coverage. We see the same symbol uh, here that we have on our jars and tubes of paint, which lets us know it's opaque. And we have the gray gesso right down here. Also, if you wanna get a darker variety, we have black gesso as well. All the gessos are gonna have this blue label on them, so you're gonna know that's where they sit in the mediums category. Then this one, if you wanna get thicker, this is super heavy gesso. So this one I have on the palette here but I wanna take it out with a palette knife and really take a look at that. Very, very thick. So if you want, you can put this on your surface and then apply paint over that and it'll look like your paint is much thicker. So without squeezing out a, a huge amount of paint, you can get that thicker consistency. But I think my favorite, and, and it's because sometimes I like to do some mixed media collage work, it's the clear gesso. So this is important to put this out. It, it dries clear, but it doesn't look like it at first. So it's a little tricky. When people first put it out, I think sometimes they think they've got the wrong product. And I wanna put it out here next to the white gesso. And clearly, it, it's white, it's white. And, and the reason that is, is because of the water content that's in there right now. Once that evaporates out, it dries clear. And we can see that, or kinda not see that, I suppose, here on this. This is just magazine stock, uh, which is quite, quite slick. The one thing you'll notice if I shift this in the light, it looks glossy over here, and I don't have any gesso, and it looks glossy over here, but in the middle it sort of looks matte, so it'll dry to a matte sheen. And let's listen. If I do this with my finger, and I move over here where I have the clear gesso, it's got a rougher texture. So the reason I like that is because I'm gonna take a colored pencil, or if you wanted to use pastel or charcoal, if we draw over here where there's no clear gesso, very hard to make a mark. We're, we're, I'm actually sort of scratching into the surface and you can definitely see there's no nice, clear, bold mark. Let's go over and immediately, and let's, let's transfer right over to the area where we don't have gesso again. So it's all in the middle area and you get beautiful color. So the clear gesso really allows you to work on a surface that's slick like this with dry material. Also nice if you're working on wood and you wanna see the wood grain uh, come through. So a final thought about gesso. This is a Liquitex Freestyle paddle brush. I, I like this brush uh, for gessoing with your thinner layers. So with your thinner layers of uh, color or thinner consistencies, I should say, of the clear gesso or the regular or the gray or black, you wanna really work it into the weave of your surface. Uh, for really good coverage. And then if, if you feel like you need a second coat, go perpendicular to your first coat. That way you'll know it's fully, fully covered and you won't have any areas of color that'll sink in. The color will sit on the surface and look fully saturated.